While I was on my 14,500 mile Tesla Model Y road trip, I made a specific goal of visiting the Tesla Giga Nevada site, actually for the second time. Check out the link above for my video of my first time, which included a rare inside tour. Today's video was focused on a drone flight of the site to get a view of how things are progressing with construction of the site and production of battery systems. Unfortunately, today the security guards wouldn't even let me drive into the site. So I drove back down the hill, found an empty piece of land and launched the drone. As you can see, expansion of the outline of the building has halted and it hasn't grown now for several years, even though the full footprint of the site is quickly available for new construction. I imagine that Tesla and its partner Panasonic are happy with the floor space they have now, and there's no need at this point in the growth curve of batteries for cars and stationary storage to spend more money on expanding the footprint. I also expect that they're constantly optimizing processes and equipment inside, making the most of what they've already got. A key item to see here in the lower left corner is the massive output of mega packs, and I counted 155 of them. These white shipping container size boxes are filled with batteries and control electronics that take in excess energy when it's being generated by solar or wind farms and then output it when it's needed by the grid. They also perform frequency stabilization, which leads to a more robust power grid as a side effect. From a financial standpoint, Tesla's energy auto bidder software can direct the megapacks to store any form of grid energy when it's cheap and output it when it's expensive, earning money on the difference called arbitrage. This accelerates the payoff time in the system or even generates an eventual profit. This store and release system can also be used for peak shaving compared to building and running a carbon laden natural gas plant for a few minutes or hours that would only generate when demand exceeds the total supply on the grid. Since mega packs are factory built, companies can just drop them onto a concrete pad, wire them in and power them up, saving tremendous on-site costs in labor and time. The precursor to Megapack, called Powerpack, was the first commercial rollout of the technology at the Hornsdale Power Reserve in South Australia, with the project installed and running in less than 100 days from contract signing. Megapacks are being installed at the Moss Landing, California power station and a single unit at the Milledgeville substation in St. John, Canada, specifically for peak shaving, which will save the utility $200,000 a year. The Victorian big battery system near Geelong, Australia, had a fire during testing due to a coolant leak, but the unit was quickly replaced and the system is now fully operational. Now, if you remember back to the initial announcement of the site, Tesla said they would power the factory with wind and solar. Well, as you can see, the wind aspect of that hasn't appeared. But in a nice bit of progress, it looks to me like solar is now covering about 70% of the roof space. I wonder what the percentage of total power consumption is coming from the roof. That's a lot of modules.
This morning, Tesla released blowout fourth quarter 2021 production and delivery numbers, causing the stock to jump $143, or 13.5%. This is unprecedented in a company with a trillion dollar market cap that's still in the hyper growth part of the demand curve. This factory, first proposed in September of 2014, has developed into a keystone of the Tesla goal of accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy in both the vehicle and storage arenas. Hey, if you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like my other content, I'd appreciate a subscribe. Take care and see you next time.